Today we're going to be speaking with Rich Lee. He's a biohacker, a transhuman of sorts. Now he can hear with his ears and no headphones. That's right, he can hear his iPod without headphones. Rich Lee has implants in his ears. He has invisible headphones. He can hear music without them. And he has a magnet on his finger that he can actually put up to his ear and hear the music. So let's talk to him right now. Rich, thank you so much for being here with me today. Uh, thanks for having me. So what gave you the idea to modify your ears and tell our viewers a little bit about what you have in your ears? Okay, well, uh, as far as the idea, uh, I've always kind of wanted bionic ears. Um, <laughs> you know, so uh, we have a biohacker forum and some people were talking about <clears throat> a method to uh, receive audio into your skull. So you said that there was a forum for this kind of thing. How did, right. it, how did this come up to put magnets in your ears, though? I'm sure there are other parts of the body that you discuss. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of other parts of the body that we discuss. Um, in fact, I've, I've got probably about 122 different uh, modifications and, uh, wow. and things like that that uh, are are uh, in some form of development at the moment. But the ears specifically, uh, there, there's some biohackers that were attempting to implant uh, some bone conduction um, devices that would allow you to receive audio directly into your skull. Hmm. Uh, and now has that been successfully done or? Um, you know, it, there's actually a, a commercial device out there that does exactly that. So it's it's definitely possible. In fact, it's probably a, a better way to do it than than what I've done. But um, uh, you know, curiosity just just kind of got the cat, and I just decided to do do my thing. So uh, the the way I got my ideas on online, there's a uh, device that I saw. <clears throat> it's often advertised as like an invisible earphone uh, device. You can get them on eBay for like twenty five, thirty bucks. Uh, you know, they've got, it, it's essentially a coil that goes around your neck. It plugs into your phone. It's got an amplifier on it. And uh, it's got some magnets that you put into your ear canal. And your audio goes up. Instead of going into some earphones, it goes into this coil. It causes a magnetic uh, field to form and it makes the, uh, the magnets vibrate. And uh, that actually creates sound that comes from the magnet. Uh, so you can buy these things online right now, and you know you don't have to implant them. You just stick these little magnets in your ears, and, and nobody, nobody really knows you have them. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of people use them to cheat on tests and things like that. <laughs> so I'm and, curious. Uh, can you hear better with them, or uh, w when the thing is going well? Um, right now, you know. I, in fact, I'm I'm kind of surprised uh, how. <laughs> how much attention this got. I wasn't really trying to promote this or, or, or draw attention to it necessarily. It just, uh, just kind of happened. It was kind of something beyond my control. Um, but uh, this is stage one. In fact, uh, what I'm working on right now is a, is a method to completely hide this coil. Uh, but as far as hearing better and things like that, yeah, that's, that's going to be um, essentially whatever I plug my device into. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to, uh, to to send whatever signal into this coil. So if I plug it into uh, a uh, directional microphone, you know, I'll be able to point it in a general direction and be able to hear, um, you know, conversations across uh, a room or, or whatever. That was the next question. I was going to say, can you eavesdrop or spy with that thing, with those magnets? Yeah, you bet. Um, if uh, it, it's going to be even better once once the coil is implanted uh, next to my magnets, and uh, I'm I'm not talking about the large coil that you might may have seen uh, around my neck. This is going to be a very small coil, mm -hmm. uh, just just next to my implant, and it's it's not going to be noticeable either. Um, <clears throat> actually, I'm experimenting with another type of coil that might uh, might really make some headlines. We'll we'll see, but. Uh, <sighs> Sorry, back into what? what That's <laughs> I okay. I'm I want to keep talking I'm, about I'm this rambling. coil. No, you're doing great. I, the coil. Do you have anything? Yeah, yeah. Do you have anything in front of you right now that you can show our, our audience? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, well, I've got uh, I've got my first prototype coil. Right, this is uh, 
the one that I, I wore around my neck. I, I just bought this online. Uh, nothing, nothing fancy about it. Just a uh, a coil of uh, copper wire and put it around your neck and plug it into something, and it works. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, oh, we were talking about eavesdropping. That's right. Yeah, uh, I will have enhanced hearing, and um, in fact, I've, I've got another device that I plan to implant uh, too that uh, allows me to hear through walls. And uh, in fact, I, I can hear through your rib cage and listen to your heartbeat. What other kind of spying can you do? You said you would be able to eavesdrop. Tell us a bit more about that. They, they've got like, okay, like an electrolarynx that uh, somebody might have if they um, have, have had a, a laryngectomy, you know? Right. Um, they've got some versions of that that take an ultrasonic tone that's emitted from your voice, uh, well, where your vocal cords used to be and translate, translates that into audio. So, uh, and then a mic will just kind of like emit that. So the idea is, is that you have this, this sub vocal mic here or, or whatever the thing for the larynx is or, or whatever. And, and so you act like you're saying something, right? And it picks up just the ultrasonic frequency that nobody can hear with their, their ears and translates it into audible audio. Uh, and then, you know, you could technically use the telephone if you have an implant like mine and somebody else has the same setup it's kind of like I can communicate with somebody through my phone uh, <laughs> without making any noise and they're gonna hear it in their ears and communicate back to me it's kind of like telepathy that is incredible that is incredible are you concerned at all that the government might be after you for being able to uh, do what they've been doing to us basically well, um, they they definitely make it hard to do what uh, what uh, I'm doing, and a lot of the things that I do in biohacking are are kind of uh, underground. I mean, it's kind of an underground movement. I I uh, honestly I don't I don't care about the government. <laughs> I mean I mean if they if they got to me they they could try to rip my implants out of me. I guess you know they'd probably just be mad at you because you took control over something that they can't put their hands into. You know. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. The, the, the tides are turning, I think. Yes. So tell me more about transhumanism or the groups that you go to. What are people wanting to do? What are the, what's the goal behind changing your, your body for enhancements? Well, you know, I think everybody has a different goal. Uh, you know, different transhumanists have different, different goals to be sure. Some people don't want to live forever. Uh, other, other transhumanists definitely want to want to live forever. Some want uh, superpowers, some don't. Uh, some are content to uh, just improve modern medicine uh, so that they can have a better standard of life. Uh, and <clears throat> really, th there's a broad range, broad spectrum there. Uh, what I'm hoping for is is hyper-diversity in our future. I, I'd like to see the human race go in a million different directions, you know, and, and look vastly different from one another. I mean, now we have we have levels of diversity that are nothing, you know. I mean, we're we're all pretty much the same, and, and I mean, we, we really pick on each other for the small, small differences, <clears throat> and uh, it's easy to be a bigot. But um, I'd like to see a day when we all really are are, are so diverse that it really gives a new meaning to uh, to diversity. Well, it definitely makes you stand out. What does it feel like to be a, the pioneer in this area for for hearing, per se? Right. You know, I, I really don't consider myself a pioneer. In fact, um, <clears throat> most people with modern hearing aids uh, can, can essentially do the same thing that I'm going to be setting out to do, too. <clears throat> you know, if you have a cochlear implant, uh, you know, with Bluetooth, you can you can do pretty much anything <laughs> that, that, that I'm going to be doing, you know, hooking hooking up my... Uh, I coil the different sensors and things like that. Uh, so I, I don't really consider myself a modern pioneer. I I, I do hope that uh, anyone else seeing this would uh, take interest and get involved and uh, go out and make all kinds of crazy implants and and uh, let's get that uh, hyper diversity going. I know you mentioned you were planning on doing something in the tune of a GPS, maybe a oh. radiation detector. You have. Either sure. do you have needs for a GPS? What is it exactly you're planning on doing? 
Uh, yeah, well, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but uh, you know, you can go onto your GPS on your phone and uh, type in directions, and, and it'll give you a set of directions. Right. Uh, people in cities uh, use the uh, walking directions a lot. I've, I've used it uh, on multiple occasions where you know you're on foot, and they know that, and they say, "Oh, take a left here, or take a take a right here." And uh, you know, instead of plugging it into into headphones, you just uh, it just goes straight to my implant. And uh, you know, I'd be able to navigate different areas and things like that. Uh, <clears throat> so that, that's kind of the GPS end of it. But the good thing is, I turn off my phone. The GPS is done, and the the GPS isn't tied to my implants, so it's not like I can be tracked by the implants that I have in. Well, that's good. The the radiation detector, um, you know, and th this this is really part of uh, <clears throat> for me. It's a part of being transhumanist, I guess, but there's there's an entire world that's around us that, that we don't see, we can't perceive, but it will kill us. If, if you see some live electrical lines on the ground and, uh, you know, you don't know they're live, you go to pick them up, you can't, sometimes you can't tell by looking at them, you know, that, that they're live. I mean, sometimes they're twitching or, or whatever, but they could kill you and, and you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know better, you'd just pick them up. There's radiation that's all around us and... Uh, in different areas. People in Chicago will kill each other using radiation. They'll put a, put a microwave up to the, uh, the wall in, the, you know, facing the apartment next to them and uh, put a pin in the, in the microwave oven door and put the thing on high and give each other brain cancer through the wall. And nobody ever knows. Nobody ever knows what's going on. I mean, if you have a radiation detector, you could detect those things. So, and uh, anyway, I mean, there, there's a huge spectrum of uh, just all kinds of activity that's uh, not perceivable. How would that work with your ear implants, though? Okay, so the way it would work is uh, it would just kind of send a signal, like a buzz or something like that. I, I program it to make a, a buzz, like a buzzing sound when I'm by something that's uh, producing radiation. So you'd have it hooked up to like a Geiger counter or something like that. Uh, you know, so if, uh, I, I don't know, if you live uh, close to Fukushima or something like that. Or, or know. massive power lines, right? <laughs> right, right. I suppose yeah. you could probably also, it's like a cell phone going into a, a radio, you know, when you're in the car and it makes a noise, I guess you'll at least be able to detect if there's wireless or signals through your ears. Uh, sure. Now, I, I do need another device in, in order to do that, you know, so, and uh, a lot of people have asked me actually if I get any kind of interference and things like that through through the implants. And at this point, no, because you even with the coil on, if it's not connected and going to something, um, there, there, there's never any interference. I don't get a, like a buzz in my ears or anything like that. Um, there's a big lightning storm going on right now uh, where I'm at, <clears throat> and uh, you know, no problems. Uh, a lot of people are concerned for me for that, but it's no big deal. And MRIs is the other big thing everyone's worried about. You know, what, what if you have to get in, you know, do an MRI? Um, I've had a million emails about that. What about uh, the TSA? Yeah, um, you know what, these, these things are so small, they just, they, I can get right through TSA. Now, I haven't been since I've had my ear magnets, but I, I do have another magnet that's implanted in my finger that I've had for a few years now. Um, and uh, the story behind that is implanting a magnet into your fingertip uh, allows you to sense uh, electromagnetic fields. <clears throat> In fact, it kind of will feel like there's a, uh, like a texture to them. Uh, the reason is, is in your fingertips, you've got these really rich nerve endings. And uh, once you implant this magnet, the nerves kind of grow around it. You can swipe your hand across something. And, and if it's got a magnetic field, you know, you kind of, you'll feel it shake. You'll feel the magnet inside your fingertips shake. So uh, when I was testing out my coil, I found that if I put my magnetic fingertip into my ear, I could hear music coming out of my, or, or whatever audio coming out of my fingertip. It was a really, uh, it was a cool experience. So, Can you pick up anything else with the electromagnetic field? Like, have you gotten anything strange? Like uh, messages or communications with strange entities and or things maybe like that. even satellites. Who knows? Uh, yeah, not yet. Okay. But, but you know, I I will be able to at some point, depending on what what kind of antenna I hook it up to or sensor. 
things like that. In fact, I've, I've got a whole, I've got a pretty lengthy list of things that the, I'd like to explore. There's some neat stuff going on in the terahertz range. So, Have you tried anything new? Uh, Any new, new experiments mm -hmm. since you've gotten your magnets? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, just a, just a few, you know, <laughs> the ear magnets, you mean? Mm -hmm. So I, I've, I've done like a lot of audio exper experiments and things like that. I'm, I'm still testing out different coils, uh, different shapes of coils and things like that to see how, how uh, that impacts sound quality. Also, I found that uh, the size of the magnet um, will cause the audio to uh, be different. So, you know, smaller magnets make a higher pitch sound. Uh, larger ones kind of make a deeper sound. Uh, so I'm considering implanting more magnets in my ears just to make uh, get get a broader range of uh, of sounds going. Do you ever yeah. have to replace the equipment? Um, no, actually, I mean, the, well, technically, all medical implants at some point will have to come out. You uh, you design so that you know you, you can get as like a, a maximum lifespan out of them, but. Okay. Uh, in the end, I mean, you, you can talk to anybody who designs them. Uh, if, if you have a, a hip replacement, it's going to have to come out at some point. So you, you'll have to upgrade at some point. Well, I mean, they'll have to come out, and at that point, I, if if I can upgrade, I definitely will. In fact, uh, you know, I if if an upgrade becomes available, I'll probably be proactive about it and and implant it. Now, as as where did you go to do this? You can't just go into a doctor to do these things because they uh, uh, doctors are only concerned with um, elevating for people from the status of cripple to normal, right? So you go in there and you say that I, I want this thing that's uh, uh, experimental and I want you just to implant it in, in my ears and they'll just laugh at you. So uh, we use uh, body modification artists. How do you find them? Oh, uh, you can find them. <laughs> it, it, you know, you go online and find them. I, I, I've got one guy that I use named Steve Hayworth. He's, uh, he's uh, very well known. He's, he's, he did my magnet, my finger, and uh, he's, he's, uh, he's really good. So, For our viewers out there who might be thinking about making a modification, what would you suggest? Do you have any tips? You know, I'd say be bold. I, I'd say just do it. I, I wouldn't let anybody tell you that... Uh, that you shouldn't do it. Um, uh, it's your body. You, you've got every right to do it. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I, I especially wouldn't let somebody tell you that. Um, especially don't let anybody tell you that you should be less of a person, right? Just to make everyone else around you comfortable. Uh, we we we're to the point right now in science that that we can make people better, better than human. You know, we can make them superhuman, but we, we still continue to, uh, to to give them, just bring them right up to the level of normal. You know, we you give a guy a uh, a hearing aid, you know, or or say say you give a guy eye surgery. You know, you could give this guy better than twenty twenty vision. You could make this guy have eagle eyes. You know, <laughs> or maybe not that far, but uh, you know, you give a guy a hearing aid and and um, you know give, you give him a standard one. That's great, but. Uh, you know, this guy should also have this thing equipped with Bluetooth, and he, he could hear, he can make phone calls from from his hearing aid and things like that. Uh, there's just there, there's so many small things where where we could just go ahead and uh, you know it, give this person some kind of a, a an added benefit instead of just um, replacing a function. So you essentially, you want to see everybody with a better quality of life. Yeah, I also want to see a weirder quality of life. <laughs> Because I mean, come on, we're all we're all pretty much the same, you know, right now as it is. I mean, how many people do you know that uh, you know can detect um, microwave radiation, you know, or or, or 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 things like that? I mean, and and who knows what happens in those worlds? I mean, we we have an idea, of course, but it, it's uh, you develop a different you develop an instinct when you're working with uh, sense uh, you know sensory input from from things that you nor normally wouldn't deal with, like a, a magnetic field or something like that, it, you just develop this new kind of sense for it, and a new set of intuition. You're talking about, about intuition and sense. How do you feel about uploading consciousness to the machine, per se? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's great. I think that's going to happen. And uh, I know a lot of people are, 
are uh, scared about it. And um, I mean, even in transhumanist circles, you know, it's a, it's uh, something that's debated a lot. If this, uh, if you get uh, continuity of, of consciousness, um, I I think uh, for me, my my opinion on it is uh, it's not anything to be afraid of because you know if you upload your mind, um, well then technically you're unless it, you destroyed your body in the process, um, well pretty much you have two sets of of uh, consciousnesses now, right? I mean you got part of your brain in the computer and you got your your meat body so but do you actually think your actual consciousness will go up or do you think it'll be a copy or a duplicate of sorts well that's the thing is like if you disconnected the original that you uploaded it from then it's a copy so this is just my opinion and, and people probably go crazy and post their opinions about this from the transhumanist community <laughs> but uh uh, you know what I think is um, you upload your mind and and you've <clears throat> and if you disconnect from that computer then uh, you've got two different entities that are still alive right and one's a copy of you but that that copy is like its own individual from that moment on um, I think that it's possible to have two bodies and one mind and and receive data from another body well that'll be something to look for forward to I think <laughs> I think so I, I think it'd be pretty wild. well will you keep us in the loop and let us know if anything else happens oh yeah, yeah for sure all right well oh, I, I should also mention too because um, <laughs> uh, we totally skipped over this part but uh, I do have an eye condition yes and, uh, I'm blind in one eye and I'm gonna go blind in the other eye it's a matter of time uh, so part of this coils function was to um, I'm going to hook it up to a uh, ultrasonic rangefinder and uh, use kind of the beeping noises that it, it it'll make to uh, be able to echolocate and move around uh, objects without sight. Uh, I don't plan on being blind permanently, so nobody worry. I just need a cornea transplant. It's a bit out of my budget at the moment, but uh, anyway, I'm 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 being proactive about uh, that uh, upcoming event and uh, want to learn how to navigate around without, without using my eyes. Are you working with somebody in tandem with somebody? Uh, with with the, uh, this project? Well, yes, with your eyesight and the beeping noises. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, there's a, a few people that have already developed products like this, so really it's a matter of just plugging it in and going. Um, I, I work with another group of biohackers that uh, has developed a similar device instead of... Uh, Having it go to your ears, it sends a beep uh, to the magnet in your finger if you have a finger magnet. So uh, you know you could scan an area, and and a small pulse will be uh, relayed to your, the magnet in your finger, and you can tell how close an object is, uh, you know, in relation to you, or if something is coming up really fast on you, things like that. Will you equip your house to be able to handle that too? Uh, yeah, that, that's going to be tricky because. Um, these rangefinders don't pick up Legos, which which is a thing that I step on quite a bit in my house. <laughs> Legos, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's another interview. It was great talking to you, Rich. Yeah, good talking to you. Take Thank care. you. All right. Bye. Well, you just saw what we thought was science fiction turned into reality right here on the show. And check out more about it. Go to the InfoWars store that's at InfoWarsShop.com and check out Robot Alchemy. Before you get too far into the transhumanism movement, check it out. Don't go too far into the rabbit hole without seeing all the things that can happen. Robot Alchemy at the InfoWarsShop.com. That's it for the nightly news. Thank you for joining me. I'm Gigi Ernetta. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.